Power series are, to a certain extent, like polynomials, and there are many computations in mathematics that are easier with power series than with other functions, for instance, integrals. In this video, I will illustrate with an example how to use Taylor series to compute integrals. I want to compute the integral from 0 to 3 of e to the minus x squared with respect to x. e to the minus x squared, that's a simple enough function. But finding an antiderivative for it is pretty hard. In fact, it is impossible to find an antiderivative for it in terms of the usual common functions. That's something that can be proven with differential Galois theory. The point is, good luck trying, you won't succeed at finding an easy antiderivative for it. So instead, I'm going to replace this function with a power series and integrate that. I'm going to begin by writing the exponential as a Maclaurin series, because that's one I already know. And we know this is valid for all real numbers x. Now, since it's valid for all real numbers x, there is no problem with the domain. And now I want the exponential of minus x squared. So instead of using x as the variable, I will use minus x squared as the variable everywhere. And let's separate the numerical coefficient so it really looks like a power series. There. So now I go back to my original calculation, the integral I'm trying to compute. And what I'm going to do is instead of integrating the function looking like this, I'm going to integrate the function looking like this. And now think of this expression simply like a polynomial of infinite degree. We know that for power series, for power series only, in the interior of the interval of convergence, we can do that. So I can simply integrate it term by term the same way you could integrate a finite polynomial. The numerical coefficients are simply multiplied. This is not something I can do with arbitrary series, but I can do it with power series. And now I'm left with integrating a power, but powers are the easiest one to integrate. An antiderivative of x to the 2n will be x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And then I simply have to evaluate at 3 minus evaluate at 0. So I'll do that. That is my final answer. Perhaps you think that it is a bit disappointing to leave it as a series, but this expression is as useful as writing something like sine of 3 or logarithm of 5. It is a series that converges, and it converges really quickly because there is an n factorial in the denominator. Let's say, for example, that I need the first five digits of this number. This is what it is, a number. Then I can simply estimate the series with a partial sum. Truncate it, take the first few terms, and that gives me a nice approximation. And I can even bound the error. In fact, if you ask your calculator or your computer to calculate this value, then this is exactly what it does. It replaces the function with a power series, then it integrates it term by term, gives the results a series, and then approximates the infinite sum with a finite sum, with a partial sum. Sometimes, even when it is possible to compute an antiderivative, it is preferable not to bother and to use power series instead. Here is a second example to illustrate it. I just want to find the antiderivatives of this function, 1 over 1 minus x to the 8. This is a rational function, it's a quotient of polynomials, and it is possible to find an antiderivative. You just have to factor the denominator and then decompose into partial fractions. But in this case, that process is long and painful. How long and painful? Well, after much work, this is what the final answer will look like. I don't recommend that you try to reproduce this calculation and do all the process getting all the way to here. You would have to be pretty kinky to enjoy this kind of stuff. So yes, this is an exact answer. It's written in terms of so-called elementary functions, but it's extremely complicated and I don't find it helpful at all. I look at this equation and I have no idea what this function does or what the graph looks like. I don't know how to estimate it or anything else. So in this case, while it is possible to find an antiderivative, there it is, let's ignore it entirely. Why don't we use power series instead? 
this function is asking us to rewrite it as a power series because this is exactly the geometric series but using x to the 8 instead of x as the variable. So look what happens when I simply do that. I can rewrite this as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 8n. And then I know exactly how to integrate that. There is nothing easier to integrate in a power. That would be x to the 8m plus 1 over 8m plus 1, of course, plus an integration constant. And yes, there is a constraint. This is only valid when the absolute value of x is less than 1. But there, that's my final answer. And consider two things. First, getting all the way here would have taken us a really long time, whereas this process was really short and simple. And second, if you compare the two final answers, I find the expression as a series much nicer and hopefully much more useful and usable than this long equation. The moral is, using power series to compute integrals is useful, sometimes even when there are other ways to do it.